So like we've discussed, the graph of any equation is a drawing that just represents all of the solutions to that equation. So in the equation, in the line that we just saw, that y equals 2x plus 1, and the example that we were plugging in values to see if the coordinate points were solutions, those are both said to be linear. Because the graph of the equation turned out to be what? A straight line. So, any equation equivalent to one of those forms, y equals mx plus b, or ax plus by equals c, if m, b, a, b, and c are constants, and a and b are not both zero, then that's linear. If a and b were both zero, we would have zero is equal to some constant, which isn't true. So we don't want a boring case like that. So we're going to start graphing and get familiar with linear equations. So the first thing we want to graph, y equals 2x. So we're going to plot points, then connect the dots to actually get a picture of what this thing looks like. So I'm going to plug in 3, 1, 0, minus 2, and minus 3 for x. x is independent, though. It's the independent variable, so you can choose whichever ones you want. y is dependent on what we're plugging in for x. So choosing the x values doesn't matter, but the y values that come out, they're not random. They're associated to each of these. So let's plug them in and see what we get. When I plug in 3 for x, what do I get out for y? 6. So I know it's going to go through the point 3, 6. When I plug in 1, I get out 2 for y. So it has to go through 1, 2. When I plug in 0 for x, what do I get out for y? zero, so we know it's going through where? Points called the origin. When we plug in minus two, what do we get out for y? Minus four. And minus three, we get out minus six when we plug it in. So you could plot way more points if you wanted to. You could even plot just two and connect the dots. But when we have more than two, it's a little bit more accurate, especially if we're drawing it by hand. So let's go ahead and plot these points see what our line looks like. First one, 3, 6, from the origin, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 0, 0, going through the origin, so you can see we're looking at a line now, but we'll draw some more so it's more accurate down here as well. Minus 2, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, Minus 3, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so grab out your straight edge, connect those dots, and we'll take a peek at what that line is looking like. So again, connect the dots, draw the arrows on the ends. The arrows are important because we have infinitely many solutions. It's continuing on forever. Okay, so take those same values or similar ones, so things that are small for x, Plug them into this equation, graph and see how it's different than what we've just seen. It's very similar, but we have a negative sign out on the front. So how is that going to change things? So if I plug in minus 3 for x, what do I get out for y? Positive 6. If I plug in minus 1 for x, I get out positive 2. If I plug in 0, I still get 0 out for y. So we know that one's still going through the origin. Easy plot. If I plug in 1, I get out minus 2. And 3, I'll get minus 6. So plotting those points, what did it look like? Let's see. So from the origin, minus 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hey, it's big enough this time. Yay. Minus 1, 2. Still going through the origin. 1, minus 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So again, connect those dots. See what we're looking at. So what do you notice that was different? We still get a straight line, still going through the origin like we had before, but how is it behaving different? So this one, I had positive 2 out on the front, and it was increasing from left to right. That one I had a minus 2, and it was decreasing from left to right. 
So just kind of foreshadowing what we're going to see later. That constant out on the front of x tells us about the picture. How is it increasing or decreasing from left to right? Last one that we want to graph for right now, this line. Different than what we've seen because now we have this constant on the back. But the concept is still the same. We can choose any x values that we want. I'm going to pick 2, 0, and the minus 1. And we will calculate those y values. So when I plug in 2 into my equation, I'm looking at minus 3 times 2 plus 1. What is my y value there? So I've got minus 6 plus 1 is minus 5. When I plug in 0, what do I get out for y? So this term goes away and I'm left with 1. So it goes through 0, 1. And lastly, when I plug in minus 1, what do we get out? So minus times a minus gives us a plus. And we're looking at 4. So again, plot those points. See what the picture looks like. First, 2 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, somewhere around there. 0, not moving at all, left and right, but up one unit. And back, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now that we have a picture of this graph, let's talk about the differences between this one that we've just finished, the previous try, and the very first one that we graphed. So in that try example, the graph passed through the point 0, 0, the origin. That was a solution to that equation and as well as this one in the very beginning. Zero, zero was a solution. It lies on that line. It's also the point at which the graph crosses the y-axis. So when I'm touching the y-axis, it happens at zero, zero. When I'm touching this y-axis, it happens at zero, zero. But what do you notice about this last one that we worked on? It crossed the y-axis at what point? 0, 1. It didn't go through the origin. The origin is not a solution. But we have a different solution that's kind of shifted up a little bit. So that was the point at which the graph crosses the y-axis for this line. So the graph of the equation, y equals mx plus b, passes through the y-intercept at 0, b at that point. So 0, 1. And we're in that y equals mx plus b form here. So m is minus 3 and b is 1. So based on this little box, the y-intercept should go through what point? 0, 1. 0 and then always the constant that's on the back, which is true. So whenever we have equations in that form, we can pluck off that value quickly and easily and know one solution at minimum. We can figure out more, but that's an easy one that comes right out. We're going to use that fact now as we're graphing more equations. I automatically know one point where it's crossing the y-axis if it's in that y equals mx plus b form, if y is by itself. So in this case, y is by itself, so I know that one of those points is going to be what? 0, 4 has to cross the y-axis at that point, and we can double check. I'm going to choose to plug in three, three points. So when I plug in zero, this term's gone. We're just left with four. So yes, it does go through that point. If you don't remember, you can always take zero, plug it in. But get into the habit. Get used to recognizing the constant on the back is the y-intercept. It'll save you time. All right. Next, I'm going to plug in five into my equation. So 5 is going to cancel with 5. I'll be left with 2 plus 4 gives me 6. And when I plug in negative 5, I'm left with minus 2 plus 4, which gives me positive 2. So let's graph those points. We know it has to cross the y-axis at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Where else? 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And minus 5, positive 2. So the other piece that we recognized from previous problems was if that number on the front was positive, 
it was increasing from left to right. So does that fit this connotation that we see now? Increasing from left to right. And the thing on the front is positive. You cannot see that line very well. All right. So we see that what is a solution of that, that equation? 0, 4. That's where our y-intercept is happening. 0, 4 is a solution. It is the y-intercept. Because the equation is in the form y equals mx plus b, we can read the y-intercept directly as follows. So when we have, again, our equation with y isolated, we just pluck off the value, plug it in, 0, 4. That's our y-intercept. So, take the next one for you to try. Graph that line, identify the y-intercept. So, we know a few pieces of information just based off of what this looks like. So, that number in the front is negative, so I know my line's going to be decreasing from left to right. That's just been the pattern so far. We'll talk more about it later. And where's my y-intercept going to happen? Zero, constant on the back. So that negative sign is attached to 1, so it's going to go through 0 minus 1. And when you're choosing values to plug in, 0 is always a standard one. I want to choose x values that are going to be easy to evaluate in here. So, what values of x are going to be nice? Very similar to what we did over there. Multiples of 5, because when I divide by 5, I want to get a whole number out, if possible. So again, I'm going to plug in 5 and minus 5, so I can deal with whole numbers. You might have plugged in something else and had to deal with fractions. So let's see, when we plug in 5, 5's are going to cancel, I get minus 3 minus 1, gives me minus 4. And minus 5 divided by 5 will give me minus 1, so I'll get a positive 3 minus 1 is 2. And again, you can write them all out. If you're not comfortable, just working through them in your head. So graphing that, what did your picture look like? Y-intercept goes through 0 minus 1, not through the origin. Another point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, minus 4. Last, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. So as you're connecting those dots, are we getting a solution that you kind of anticipated. So it's going through 0 minus 1, goes through that point on the y-axis, and it's decreasing from left to right since that thing is negative out on the front. So the y-intercept always happens at a point. So this is our y-intercept. I don't ever want to see you reporting the y-intercept just as a number. If you say minus 1 is the y-intercept, not true. It happens at a point. Because now we're dealing with a linear equation, but if I have a polynomial that maybe curves and crosses the y-intercept at a couple different points, it's not going to be true in that case. All right. So, turning the page. Calculating ordered pairs is usually the easiest when y is isolated on one side of the equation. So we want that form y equals mx plus b. But if you look at the equation that's given to us next, is it in that nice form? No, it's given to us with the x's and the y's on the same side. But we can solve for y and examine then the y-intercept, how the, the line is going to increase or decrease, and we can plug in points easily. So, let's take that and solve. I want y on its own. So the first thing I need to move it's 5x to the other side. So he's going to be negative over there. And I want y on its own, so I need to divide both sides by 3. If we do all this work in the beginning, before we start plugging in points, we only have to calculate this once. Now when I plug in values, it's going to be easy. I don't have to compute this every single time I'm looking at the points. So let's just talk. It's in that y equals mx plus b form. What is my y-intercept? What point is it going through? So if it's helpful, what value can I add on to the back of this equation without changing anything? 
the additive identity is zero. So where's the y-intercept happening at? The origin, it's going to go through zero, zero. Again, if you aren't convinced, plug in zero for x, see what you get out for y. I don't like seeing it in this form because it's not simplified and nice looking, so I'm just going to erase the zero. But if it's helpful for you to write it in, go ahead and do that. So I've got another question. As I'm choosing my independent variable values I want to plug in, what's going to be nice to plug into here? Multiples of 3. So I'm going to pick positive, negative. Make it easier on ourselves. So when I plug in positive 3, what are we looking at? 3 divided by 3 is going to cancel, and I'm left with minus 5. If I plug in a negative 3, I get minus 1 times minus 5 will give me a positive. So again, let's graph. Look at the picture. It's going through the origin. Another point is 1, 2, 3, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And minus 3, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, is it behaving like you thought it would? I should really rely on the straight edge. It was negative, so decreasing from left to right and going through the point 0, 0. Matches our, our thinking pretty well. So turning the page, again that equation is not in the standard y equals mx plus b form. So go ahead and take it, solve for y, plug in some points, and give me a pretty picture. What did you have to do first to isolate y in this case? Move 3x to the other side. So we're looking at 4y is minus 3x minus 8. You usually write the x first so you don't get confused of what constant the y-intercept is going through. And I need y on its own, so I need to divide both sides by 4. So y is equal to minus 3 fourths x minus what constant back here? Minus 8 divided by 4 gives me minus 2. So, the graph is going to be decreasing left to right since it's negative, and it's going to go through what point? The y-intercept happens at 0 minus 2. So, that's one of the points. And, again, what are going to be easy numbers to plug in for x to evaluate? Multiples of 4. So, I'm just going to pick positive and negative, see what we get. Positive 4. Cancel, I get minus 3 minus 2 gives me minus 5. Minus 4 will give me plus 3 minus 2. So I'm looking at 1. So plot those points. See what it's looking like. I know it's going to be decreasing, going through 0 minus 2. It's my y-intercept. Another point, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Minus 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 1. Okay, don't laugh at my not very straight lines. Not very accurate drawings either. But does it fit our connotation of what it's supposed to look like? Decreasing left to right, going through the y-intercept at that point. 